Hi guys, welcome back to the second part of our discussion with the topic ensuring feature quality through competency framework and standards. We already shared and talked about the four essential competencies. I hope that you will keep it in your heart and in your mind so that in the future, once you become the teacher, you'll be able to apply or practice it. And now, let's talk about the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. When did it start and why do we need it as a future teachers? The Philippine government has consistently pursued teacher quality reforms through a number of initiatives. And this is actually a positive thing that we have in um, education department in the Philippines because there are uh, changes that we need to or may mga reforms tayo na dapat sinusunod para sa mas magandang education sa bansang Pilipinas. And this is actually a good thing since uh, we all know naman that education is really uh, one of the best na foundation para magkaroon ng magandang trabaho yung ating mga students or other professionals. That's how important teaching is. And kaya diba, isa siya sa may pinakamalaking budget na nilalaan ng gobyerno. And that's why there are certain reforms to make sure that it's effective and mag, mas maging productive yung ating education sa bansang Pilipinas. And as a framework of teacher quality, the National Competency-Based Teacher Standards, or NCBTS, was institutionalized through CHED Memorandum Order Number no. 52, ser Series of 2007, and DEP-Ed Order Number no. 32, Series of 2009. So it's actually present for both uh, college at dito sa DEP-Ed, sa high school, senior high, and then sa elementary level. And... Uh, Lagi natin ano to ha, isa puso natin yung meaning ng NCBTS na to. Kasi uh, it will also be included sa board exam nyo. Mahikita nyo yan. It's the National Competency-Based Teacher Standards. Since it's um, essential then as a future teachers para mas maging effective yung teaching natin. Now, um, ma-apply din natin yung mga mapapansin din natin na yung four essential competencies ng Southeast Asia na ating pinag-usapan with the first video ay almost same lang na na-apply din dito sa uh, Philippine Standards for uh, Teaching. Kasi somewhat like the same lang din naman talaga yung uh, pagkakaroon ng competency and standards sa pagtuturo. The K-12 Reform or RA-10 uh, 533 in 2013 has changed the landscape of teacher quality requirements in the Philippines. That's true, guys. Uh, after this, uh, nagkaroon ng K-12 curriculum, sobrang daming changes and even the quality requirements uh, for teachers in the Philippines. Lalo na di ba pag uh, sa mga senior high school teachers, hindi naman pwedeng pagturuin lang yung nasa high school na teachers na walang specific na specialization sa pagtuturo nila. So, what happened is nagkaroon ng mas, mas hiring, so maraming mas kinailangan teachers and that when that happened. And we all know that after, di ba nung naipasa yung K-12 na yan, marami din teachers na nawala ng trabaho, lalo na dun sa college uh, level. That's one of the issues, but look at it now, di ba? Naging maganda naman din yung daloy ng uh, pagkakaroon or pag-enter na ng mga senior high school na students. I know na isa kayo doon sa I'm naging part na kayo ng K-12 program. Before kasi yung unang graduate ng ano, fourth year ba yung unang graduate na fourth year, sila dapat yung susunod na magka-college. But because of senior high school, nagkakaroon ng grade 11. So yung mga teachers na nagtuturo ng college for first year uh, for sure college, nawalan sila ng students. So, most of them ay nagkaroon ng mga trainings just to make sure na makaka-apply sila as uh, senior high school teachers. Kasi, ito yung sinasabi that we are still having a quality requirements in the Philippines. Hindi naman ibig sabihin nun na porket kulang yung teachers ay 
pababae na lang yung requirements. Of course not. There are still changes na nangyayari. But of course, hindi naman binibigla din yung mga teachers. Inuunti-unti rin naman yung mga requirements ng uh, DepEd na yan. Kaya, malaki din na naitulong doon sa mga teachers na nawalan ng trabaho or nawalan ng mga estudyante for the first years ng K-12 program na to, na curriculum. Then, the reform process warrants an equivalent supportive focus in teacher quality, high-quality teachers who are properly equipped and prepared to assume the rule, the roles and functions of K-12 teachers. Uh, ito nga yung sinasabi ko, they have their own requirements and DepEd or the government was, ano naman, naging supportive naman talaga sila to produce uh, quality, high quality teachers who are properly equipped and prepared na mag-assume ng role for the first time na mag-handle ng mga senior high school students. And um, dito sa Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, which is built on NCBTS, complements the reform initiatives on teacher quality from pre-service education to in-service education training. Totoo yan, guys. Hindi lang sa mga maging teacher or maging teacher that time na in-implement yung K-12. Even nowadays that you are part of uh, yung mga pre-service education or in-service training, yung nagtitraining pa lang. Siyempre, dapat naman talaga, pag kayo yung teacher, hindi naman pwedeng i-train kayo for uh, traditional or before pa na way of teaching. Of course, Uh, even yung sa college or kayo yung mga pre-service education students or teachers, ay tinuturuan na din ay tin at tinitrain na din sila during their training. Kasi aani naman talaga yung training, di ba? Kung hindi naman sila tinitrain para sa next chapter na magiging teacher na sila. So, that's one of the standards. And it articulates what constitutes teacher quality in the K-12 reform through well-defined domains strands and indicators that provide measures of professional learning, competent practice, and effective engagement. Nandaan natin tong tatlong to. Una, professional learning. Of course, this subject pa lang na teaching profession, di ba? First year pa lang kayo. But um, you are already learning professionally kung ano ba talaga yung isang teacher, kung ano yung mga code of ethics or kung ano yung mga practices and characters of the teachers, and even the standards and competency, which are really needed to be a best or the good teacher in the future. And it articulates, tapos dito din sa competent practice, kaya pinag-aaralan natin yung mga competencies na to at standards na to, para in the end, you are competent enough, and uh, it could be seen in your practices or sa mga ginagawa natin in the future. But don't be so pressured, guys. The first year pa naman kayo. You are not really um, asked na kailangan ng master na lahat ng standards na yan. This is only a theory or dito muna tayo sa mga uh, theories or sa mga competencies na pag-aaral para mas maging familiar kayo. And this would be a good thing na para sa susunod na mga topics or mga discussions are you or you will be Uh, provided a guide na alam ay oo nga no kasi pag teacher ganto dapat yung standards kailangan ganto kaya kailangan natin pag-aralan tong mga bagay na to so mapapansin niyo na once you study or take more professional education subject yung pang-edu yung mga major subjects niyo and then we have active engagement kasi di ba hindi lang naman ikaw as a teacher uh, sobrang dami mong dapat na i-consider you as a teacher sa sarili mo Diba dun sa four essential elements pa lang competencies, hindi lang naman sa mga students, even sa mga sa community and even oneself, diba? Tinatalakay din natin yan. Kaya nagiging effective engagement siya. So, we need to be open sa community and other uh, stakeholders, stak- uh, sa mga stakeholders na kasama yung school, even our administrators. And now, um, the Professional standards, therefore, become a public statement of professional accountability that can help teachers reflect on and assess their own practices as they aspire for personal growth and personal development. Since you are not yet a teacher, but uh, you are still on the training or nag-aaral pa lang kayo, 
uh, this would be, ito lang tandaan nyo kung bakit nyo pinag-aralan or bakit nyo kailangan isa puso tong mga lessons na to. Kasi nga, it will help you to reflect and assess your own practice as you aspire for personal growth and uh, professional development. At least, ngayon, first year pa lang kayo, guys, ay nagkakaroon na kayo ng professional development para uh, kung maging teacher kayo in the future. And I do believe that. And I know that some of you might not yet love this profession yet. But don't you worry. Time will come. That, kaya nga diba, teaching is not just a profession, not just a mission, but also a vocation. Malay mo, tinatawag ka talaga sa pagtuturo, diba? So, this is a good start. So, maging ano lang tayo, kung hindi man, kung ayaw naman talaga ng teaching, kasi I know, first year students talaga ay not, uh, may mga ano pa, nalilito pa kung ano ba talaga ang course na hukunin. But I hope that studying the subject will actually uh, inspire you to study or to continue this uh, education na course, guys. And then, uh, dito tayo sa teacher quality in the Philippines naman. Let's see. So, ano ba yung teacher quality na to? The Philippine professional standards for teachers define teacher quality in the Philippines. So, yun yung makikita natin na yun talaga yung teacher quality. Dapat merong quality yung teacher na dito sa ating bansa. And the standards describe the expectation of teachers' increasing levels of knowledge, practice, and professional engagement. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. At the same time, the standards allow for teachers' growing understanding applied with increasing sophistication across a, across a broader and more complex range of teaching learning situations. Yan. Applied with increasing sophistication. Lagi talagang uh, nagde-develop dapat. Kaya ngayon, guys, uh, maganda rin yung pinatupad nila na although, uh, minsan magastos din sa tagat sa teachers, ang um, before ka, uh, nagkakaroon dapat ng professional development. Before ka, pag na-expire na yung license mo, kailangan mong umattend ng maraming seminar, ng mga seminars, tapos, or, magkakaroon ka ng professional development by um, enrolling sa masteral or doctorate or whatsoever or ano may yung course na yan. Kasi that will increase your sophistic sophistication or nagkakaroon ng professional development. Kasi as teachers, di ba, uh, always remember this guys, that teachers are always a, uh, a student. Lagi tayong student. Kahit maging teacher na, student ka pa rin. Kasi nga, you keep on learning, you keep on learning every day dapat. Kasi you have different students, iba-ibang paniniwala, and sobrang dami mong i-consider dapat sa ano, sa education once you become a teacher. Kaya mahalaga na nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, increase ng knowledge, ng uh, nag-increase tayo din ng skills natin para mas effective yung teaching natin. And let's talk about the seven domains required for effective teachers in the 21st century in the Philippines. Diba? Dito na tayo sa 21st century in the Philippines. Imagine that one, guys, nung um, college pa yata ako, first year, di naman namin pinag-aralan tong 21st century in the Philippines na to. But nowadays, na kayo ay product na or magtuturo na kayo ng uh, 21st century learners, kaya dapat, kasama talaga siya, nagkakaroon din siya, required siya sa pre-service training or even sa discussion natin dito sa subject na to. O, ba guys, uh, this is a good thing din na nakikita din natin or we have to be observant enough. Yung yung mga theories na pinag-aaralan natin ay let's take a look kung sa mga practices. Halimbawa na ito, ba kasabi ko lang kanina na uh, pag nagkakaroon din ng changes or development or improvement dun sa mga subject. Kaya itong 21st century na to ay sinasali na talaga. Kasi Bago na yung century natin. And this is the students that will be handling in the future. Or maybe, magkaroon na ng changes. But still, di ba? Magkakaroon pa rin ng reform ang ating education. And the first domain, guys, ay content, knowledge, and pedagogy. I recognize the importance of mastery of content, knowledge, 
and its interconnectedness within and across curriculum areas, coupled with a sound and critical understanding of the application of theories and principles of teaching and learning. Um, dito pa lang sa domain, di ba? Domain 1, mabigat-bigat na. Wherein, we need to be a mass, uh, master, we have the mastery of the topic, or dapat may knowledge tayo, or kung dapat alam natin kung paano natin ituro yung specific topic na yun. And, uh, uh, interconnectedness, guys. Always keep this in mind, pag, uh, lalo na pag professional education na subjects. Uh, don't ever, ano, yung ihiwalay mo yung pag-aaral mo. Dito sa subject na to, ganito lang yan. Di ko dapat i-apply to. Dapat nagka- makakitaan mo siya ng interconnectedness na, uh, limbawa, dito sa subject na to, sa teaching profession, di ba may mga topics tayo na alam ko na na-apply din ninyo doon sa ibang subjects. So, that's interconnectedness. Always uh, look for connection sa pag-aaral natin ng mga subject na to. Not just the practices of teachers, but even yung mga subjects na pinag-aaralan natin. Okay? And we have to, um, di lang understanding, but we need to apply it, application of theories. But nowadays, first year pa lang kayo, I hope na na-apply nyo din sa mga nakikita ko sa mga reflection paper nyo or dun sa mga sagot nyo sa exam. Ha? Para in that way, I could still see na may natutunan kayo dun sa mga theories. And then, uh, domain 1 na strand. May pitong strand pa sa domain 1. And first is content knowledge and its application within and across curriculum areas, research-based knowledge, and principles of teaching and learning. Isa-isahin natin yan may maya. Positive use of ICT. So, meron din talagang negative, but we'll be focusing on the positive use. And strategies for promoting literacy and numeracy. Strategies for developing the critical and creative thinking, as well as ha- uh, other higher order thinking skills, the mother tongue, Filipino, and English in teaching and learning. And lastly, guys, classroom communication strategies. Okay, dito tayo sa... Uh, domain 4 but domain 4 na agad wait lang guys ha? ayan dun yun sa domain 1 so hindi na siya lead guys so I'll just explain it so domain 1 so first trend explain ko na to the second one is research based knowledge and principles of teaching and learning kaya mahalaga na tayo mga teachers ay will be familiar or alam natin paano mag-research kasi uh, it's something like uh, makikita natin that we are competitive enough by doing this research and validate natin or uh, we have a valid reason why we do such strategy, methods, or even the practices that we are having with our students. That is positive use of ICT. Kasi, di ba, facilitators of learning, this is a great way talaga na ituturo sa mga bata or they will be guided about the positive use of ICT na just for playing games or other matters na hindi naman nakakatulong sa ating mga sudyante. And strategies for promoting literacy and numeracy. Kasi nga, yun yung advocacy na at teachers, we need to teach students. Kaya, dapat ay we promote literacy and numeracy. And then, that strategies for developing critical and creative thinking as well as higher order thinking skills. Ayan guys, yun yung meaning ng HOTS, HOTS question, higher order thinking skills. Ayan yung mga question na mapapaisip ka, yung mga why, how, I love that. So, dun talaga nakikita yung critical or nagkakaroon ng creative thinking ng ating mga estudyante, not just a simple of multiple choice or not just merely memorizing the topics. Dapat naiisip din talaga niya. Diba? And the mother tongue, Filipino and English in teaching and learning. Yan. Start talaga sa mother tongue muna. Kasi yan yung uh, unang language na. Or ginagamit ng mga bata. And then classroom communication strategies. Pag-usapan din natin yan later on. I'll provide different types kung paano natin Paano tayo makipag-communicate sa ating mga students? Do we need to always uh, be with them? Na kailangan ba nating makisama sa kanila palagi? So, alamin natin yan. 
And the next domain is learning environment. Provide learning environments that are safe, secure, fair, and supportive in order to promote learner responsibility and achievement. Imagine that one, guys, dapat talaga nagkakaroon ng fair, tapos dapat safe, tapos feeling secured talaga yung ating mga estudyante for the subject. Lalo na pag magtutuo ka ng elementary or even high schools, kasi high school na mga bata, kasi that's the time that they need more ano talaga security security or they need to feel safe and to be supportive supported by their uh, peers or even teachers and parents so dapat learning environment pa lang ay nabibigyan na natin ng justice para sa mga bata to keep them on learning and the learner safety so yan na yan and the second or the third domain naman or The third domain is diversity of learners. Establish learning environments that are respons responsive to learner dis diversity. So, we discuss, uh, na-discuss ko na din siya sa first video na ang ating mga students ay iba-iba or diversity of learners talaga. And even from the way they dress naman, diba? From the way they believe or mga beliefs, traditions nila, And even sa learning styles nila, pa iba iba talaga. So, we need to be responsive and um, to be considerate enough to all our students. Kasi nakikita doon na fair tayo sa lahat ng bata and uh, we are measuring them based on what they can give. Kung ano yung specific skills and talents na meron sila. And uh, third stand... Learners, gender, needs, strength, interests, and experiences. Of course, you, yung experience talaga is a great teacher. In that way, um, makapag-practice yung bata or may papakita sila kung ano man yung uri ng paniniwala or beliefs kung paano man sila pinalaki ng parents nila. And, makikita natin na even kung hinahiyaan natin yung mga batang yan, respecting their needs, interests, other student will see to it. Hindi lang, uh, kahit mga estudyante, matututo nun. Hindi man sa topic, but uh, about socializing with other people, about different people. Tapos, kailangan pala na i-respect sila. Hindi natin sila i-judge. So, in that way, dun palang, di ba, si teacher, ay may natutunan na yung bata. Nai-impart na natin yung knowledge sa kanila by letting them experience it. And then, learners' linguistic, cultural, social, economic, and religious backgrounds. Yan. Tandaan nyo yung mga na-discuss ko sa teaching profession. Ay, sa Code of Ethics. Kung saan, huwag natin ipilit yung mga religious beliefs natin sa ating mga studyante. And learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents. Yan. Kung nakikita mo na napaka-gifted talaga ng bata, tapos napaka-talented, Make sure na you help that students na to improve pa din. Tapos, nabibigyan siya ng mga opportunities na mas may papakita pa yung kagalingan niya. Huwag natin siyang uh, hayaan na maging stagnant lang. Kasi sayang yung knowledge or yung talent ng bata. And, um, and by the way guys, about this giftedness and talents. Um, kung nakikitaan mo, limbawa, um, may student ka first year high school. Tapos, alam mo na parang sobrang talino na talaga yung napag-iiwanan niya yung mga kaklase niya. Uh, please help uh, seek some guidance or some help from the guidance counselors. Kasi yung mga guidance counselors, kasi they have uh, isa din sila sa tumutulong talaga to develop the students. Kasi di mo naman talaga matutukan yung isang batang yan tapos marami ka pang studyante sa isang classroom. So, you could seek some help from your administrators or even sa guide, lalo na sa guidance counselors para um, makahanap ng paraan. It's either i-apply yung bata for alls or other ano, other scholarships na may enjoy ng bata. Kasi gifted yan eh. Why not ano, diba, provide more? Kasi para mas makikita talaga yung tunay na galing niya at mas nandidevelop. Hindi lang basa-basang masasayang. And learners in difficult circumstances, pag nahihirapan yung bata, ay huwag nating hayaan na, eh, ganun talaga yun eh. We need to accept it na 
di naman marunong mo, di na matututo yung bata yan. Let's remove that kind of mentality. Kasi, uh, teachers, posible na walang bata hindi natututo. Tandaan nyo yan. I, it always take a lot of effort and patience. Kasi lalo na pag nasa difficult circumstances yung bata. Maybe, ba diba, ikaw yung naka, mga katulong sa kanya kung paano siya makapagbasa. Or, ikaw yung magiging way para mapasa niya yung subject. So, that's one of the, ano talaga, pinakamasayang moment as a teacher for you kung dumating man yung araw na yan na magkaroon ka ng student. I even have that student nung turo ko sa elementary. Ano na dun, so hindi talaga, oh, hirap na hirap sa pagbabasa. But once you keep on teaching that child or maging patient ka lang, tapos keep on motivating, inspiring that child, may kita mo kung gano'ng ka-powerful talaga yung isang uh, isang teacher to change the lives of students. And of course, learners from indigenous groups, parang para lang to siya sa, na, sa diversity, iba-iba yung student. Kaya, consider din natin yan. Alam na, pag ma-assign tayo sa mga mabundok na lugar, okay, ayan. <laughs> Dapat maging ano, patient talaga tayo. And we need to respect kung ano man yung mga beliefs nila. And then, um, fourth domain, curriculum and planning. Interact with the national and local curriculum requirements. Don't you worry guys about the curriculum planning. Meron kayong subject neta sa second year niya, the teacher and the school curriculum. Kasi, uh, bakit part ka din ng curriculum? Kasi ikaw as a teacher, you will be one of the uh, ano, evaluators or creator ng curriculum talaga. Kasi alam mo yung mga student mo, kakayahin ng mga studyante mo. And about this curriculum planning guys, uh, interact with the national and local curriculum. Hindi ka lang dapat sa mismong school na ay, ito yung kailangan ng school, gusto ng school eh, kaya dapat itong gagawin ko. No. Uh, we need to interact with the national and local curriculum kasi hindi naman tayo ano eh, hindi naman tayo nakahiwalay. We as a teachers are part of the government at tayo ay parte ng ano, pag-unlad ng bansang Pilipinas dapat. Yun yung dapat na thinking natin. Kaya sumusunod tayo kung ano man yung mga objectives tsaka curriculum na uh, pinapatakbo ng ating bansang Pilipinas. Sanimbawa, kung K-12, di naman pwedeng, ano, uh, kung ako may-ari ng school, ay ako magkaroon ng senior high school, di ba imposible yon? Kaya wala ka nakikita kahit sobrang yaman pa ng school na yan. Uh, they still need to follow ng K-12 na talaga dapat nagkakaroon ng senior high school bago nila i-enroll yung mga bata sa college. Kasi, it's for national and local curriculum. Kasi hindi naman basta-basta na-accept or napapatupad yung bagong curriculum na yan. Of course, there are lots of experts or there are researches na ginawa bago pa yan nangyari or pinatupad. So, sobrang haba ng process na yan. And then, um, we have the the fifth dome and the four strands ng dito sa curriculum na to. Planning and management of teaching and learning process. Kaya pag nagtuturo tayo, tal- palaging may ano, lesson plan. Kasi dapat uh, napuforsi na natin kung ano man talaga yung gusto natin mangyari after the class or after the discussion. And then learning outcomes aligned with learning competencies. Uh, dapat talaga naka-align lahat ng outcomes natin. Hindi tayo nagpapagawa ng specific activity na hindi naman talaga connected dun sa objectives na binibigyan natin. The relevance and responsiveness of learning programs. Ayun, kaya sa mga subjects or even sa mga tinuturo talaga dapat relevant dun sa program. Di naman pwedeng ano, magtuturo ako ng pagluluto sa inyo for this subject. Diba? Of course, it's more on teaching talaga. It should be relevant dun sa program na kinukuha niyo. And then, uh, professional collaboration to engage teaching practice. Don't you worry guys, once you will become fourth year students na talaga, ay magkakaroon kayo ng practice teaching wherein you could collaborate with other teachers or even you will be assigned to teach or kayo na mismo yung magtuturo, kaya nga practice teaching. That's way of collaborating with the professionals. At you are already experiencing what teachers are, kung ano mang buhay ng teachers. 
and then teaching and learning resources including ICT kaya may mga subject ay na ICT talaga sa so, smart of learning or mga technology kasi kailangan din natin yan in the future pag magtuturo na kayo and the fifth domain assessment and reporting apply a variety of assessment tools and strategies in monitoring evaluating documenting reporting learners needs progress and achievements Yan, daming ginagawa ang teacher assessment and reporting pa lang. Don't you worry guys, yung assessment naman, you'll be guided for it. At may next subject tayo niyan, ang assessment of learning. Tuturuan kayo kung paano mag-evaluate, kung paano magbigay ng exam, kung anong klaseng test ibibigay mo sa mga bata, or kailangan ba i-record yung test na to na binigay ko sa kanila, or hindi. So, you'll be familiar with it once you'll become second year students. So, binibigay ko lang kayo ng ano, um, mirror or somewhat like yan, picture na mapaparsi nyo para at least pag second year na kayo ay maging clear na sa inyo na kung bakit kailangan natin pag-aralan tong specific na subject na to. Kasi kailangan talaga siya dito sa pinag-aaralan natin ng professional standard for teachers. Okay? And uh, the fifth strand design Selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies. So, we need to feedback to improve learning. Bibigay tayo ng feedback sa ating estudyante. Communication of uh, learners' needs, progress, and achievement to key, uh, to key stakeholders. Of course, we need to talk with the parents, like teachers, kung ano man yung achievement na nagkakaroon ni isang bata. And use of assessment data to enhance the teaching and learning practices and programs kasi we always need to enhance what we are doing be it teaching and learning practices ang curriculum nga sa bansa nagkakaroon ng reforms diba ang teaching pa kaya way of teaching pa kaya natin inside the classroom and the sixth domain community linkages and professional engagement so meron kayong subject na ito, community the school diba ang um, dapat talaga nagkakaroon ng linkages and establish school community partnerships in at enriching the learning environment as well as the community's engagement and the educa uh, educative process. Uh, kayo ngayon kasi first year, nagkataon na inabutan kayo ng lockdown, ng, ano, ng pandemic, but once you will be part during sa face-to-face, -face, you will see guys na ang university talaga or ating school ay nagkakaroon ng community linkages or nagkakaroon ng partnership with the barangays or sa mga malalapit na barangay sa ating school. Meron pa nga, di ba, yung iba, tinutulungan yung other barangays by providing programs kasi nga, in that way, makikita natin na may connection talaga yung community and the school kasi, of course, we are, ano, palaging nandyan yan. Kasi kayo, tayo, di ba, part naman tayo ng community. So, how much more in our school, di ba? Dapat connected yung dalawang yan. And then, establishment. Ito yung mga strand. Establishment of learning environments that are responsive to community context, engagement of parents and the wider school community in the educative process, professional ethics. Aralan na natin yan sa code of ethics. <laughs> guys, sa puso na yun, guys. Hindi lang ngayong first year, but once you become the teacher, until mag na tayo as a teacher. <laughs> and then, the school policies and procedures then. Dapat pinag-aaralan. Kaya, before na papasok sa school or mag-start talaga ng klase, nagkakaroon ng, ano, ang tawag nito. So, mag like meeting na kung saan discuss ng school sa inyo ng administrators ang mga policies and procedures para Uh, kasi magiging part na kayo ng community or magiging part na kayo ng school. So, if you are in Rome, be a Roman. So, kung part ka ng school na yan, uh, we need to respect kung ano man yung mga ano, policies na pinapatupad ng ating school. And the seventh domain, personal growth and professional development. Value personal growth and professional development and exhibit high personal regard for the profession by maintaining qualities that uphold the dignity of teaching such as caring, attitude, respect, and integrity. Yan, port ulit na din tayo dyan sa um, maintaining qualities na yan. Sa dignity pa lang, 
ng self-caring, to attitude, respect, and integrity. Yan. We have to live with it. I-live natin yung dignity na yun as a teacher. And the dom- uh, for the seventh, dom- seventh domain, the strands are philosophy of teaching. Ito, sama din sa pag second year kayo, third year, mag-discuss din natin yung philosophy of teachings na yan. Uh, in this way kasi guys, makikita natin na iba-iba talaga ang teacher. Iba-iba yung pagtuturo nila o iba-iba yung paniniwala nila. Kasi depende yun sa philosophy nila of teaching. Other teachers, ito yung mga tinatawag na essential types of teachers. I will not, ano, gusto ko lang makita nyo ha, yung sa philosophy ng teaching. May ibang teachers na paniniwala nila, mas mahalaga na maging sa book, mga essential, kung ano yung mga topics, dapat familiarize or memorize to ng mga bata nito. There are other teachers na more on existentialist. Gusto nila na yung mga bata ay nakaka-experience or you respect kung ano may interest nila, kung saan sila mas magaling, dun mo i-improve. Pwede yon. And then, may mga philosophy din na teachers na ano, uh, perennialism, kung saan dapat yung mga ano, sobrang tagal na na book, yun lang yung pag-aaralan ng mga bata kasi it's already proven and validated, something like that. So, iba-iba sila na paniniwala. But it doesn't mean that they are wrong with it. Nasa ano yan, philosophy ng teaching nila. But nowadays, um, more, most, isa sa mga sikat na philosophy talaga is learning by doing. Ah, hinahayaan nila yung bata na matuto sa pamagitan ng paggawa or let them do the things that they have to know or they need to learn. Kasi nga, teachers for 21st century learners are only facilitators of learning. Hindi na tayo yung dispenser or source ng lahat ng knowledge na dapat nagkakaroon yung mga bat. And dignity of teaching as a profession. Ayan na naman tayo sa dignity as a teaching profession. Uh, professional links with colleagues. So, dapat marunin tayong makisama. Professional reflection and learning to improve practice. And lastly, professional development goals. So, before, naalala ko dati yung, ay, may sinasagutan din kasi portfolio na uh, during your practice teaching or may mga field study din kayo. Uh, isa dun sa mga tanong hindi ko makakalimutan is, after I graduate, ay, parang nagbibigay ng plano dun, yung professional goals ko. I uh, just wanted to share it with you. Yung after ko, nung fourth year ako, gusto ko, ano, pagka-graduate ko to pass the board exam, So, after ko makapasa ng board exam, I will um, take up yung kukuha ko ng units for masteral. Then, after yun, magiging principal na ako. <laughs> Tapos, I would really love to remember that feedback from my advisor na sabi niya, kayang-kaya ko daw yung abutin yung pangarap na yung goal na yun for sure. But, of course, time change. Um, ayun, no. Well, Natapos ko naman yung masteral ko, but hindi sa pagiging principal. <laughs> Narealize ko mahirap pala maging principal. Sobrang daming ginagawa. So, I, but of course, I would always still love to, um, so gusto ko pa rin para talaga na mag-isang teacher na lang na we're in. I will be having a communication with my students. Or ako yung mismo nagtuturo. But for you in the future naman siguro makikita niyo din kung para saan kayo at kung saan talaga kayo masaya. But at least, you are having that goal. Kaya kayo ngayon na first year pa lang, dapat ginugol, meron na kayong goal na dapat gagraduate ka ng fourth year. Pagka-graduate mo ay, i-aim mo na agad na makapasa ka na ng board exam. Okay? And now, uh, gandun lang yung sa domain strengths na to guys. So, the career stages. Ano yung mga career stages na to? Okay, hiwalay ko na lang siya. Ikakat ko na lang yung video. So, continue watching this one guys para uh, hiwa-hiwalay natin yung topic. Thank you!